This episode is brought to you by Indie Film Hustle TV, the world's first streaming service dedicated to filmmakers, screenwriters, and content creators. Learn more at IndieFilmHustle.tv. Your first feature um, was called Bullets, Guts, Blood, and Octane, which arguably is one of the which was yeah. arguably the one of the best titles uh, to come out of the '90s. I have to say. Uh, <laughs> well, I hope so. Dude. Maybe not the best film to come out of the '90s. But so no, but no. again, brother, going back to this, this is a this is a movie that I was in. We made for like seven grand. Mm-hmm. It was it was designed to totally to kickstart everything. I think unfortunately we got caught in the massive. Uh, uh, like Wake that Tarantino had created, and no one could do a crime genre film of any kind without the immediate supposition being, well, it's Tarantino, it's Tarantino, as though that genre never existed prior to Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction. Right. So that always kind of rankled me because there's used cars, Bob Zemeckis in there, there's Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, Honestly. there's all these kind of influence, more Leonard, there's all that shit. But watching it now as a much older guy, I think the writing is great and it's funny and it's goofy and it's amateur, but it works. And it's like, it just never I never um I never thought it got a fair shake and shake. And I think I think I think I've had one of those careers, dude. I think it's always been um and you know, you sit here and go, Well, I never got my due. I never got my due. It's not about getting your due. I just always think I was misunderstood in certain ways. And it took movies like The Gray to go, Oh, the guy I guess the guy is serious about oh, you know, it's like, uh, you know, it's like but I just don't like to do the same shit. You know what I mean? Right. And it's like and I think sometimes that because it's not I'm not, I've always said this, I, I'm not, I don't want to make, I'm not interested in making movies. That, I'm not, I don't give a shit if they say anything about me in 50 years. You know, it's like, I want to make stuff I enjoy and stuff that, you know, that, that for whatever, that whatever it is, but I'm certainly not curating a career. You know, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm like, I, I think about it very much, you know, I came from, you know, a, a lower middle class, you know, middle Michigan kind of, and, and you're lucky to be, Hey, you pulling a paycheck doing this? I mean, my mother says to me, "Well, honey, I'm, at least you know, at least I'm glad you got your de- got your degree." It's like, "Mom, I think I'm okay." Well, you make this film, and and from what I understand, yeah. you shot it on 16 and edited it on video. Yeah. So I'm assuming you edited it on three quarter, or did you do? No, a- but I, I, I did on M2, the Panasonic M2, which was the cheap. Wow. Oh, I know, dude. The horror. I know, bro. I know. Bro, you look like you just saw like a like like, like oh, you know like a no, photo. No, because oh, I, I I actually and I actually saw I actually did some research and it is it true that you edited on the Pinnacle DVE? No, brother, I edited on it was yeah the fast yeah the the, 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 the Pinnacle the fast it was the precursor to the Avid. But I'll tell you this, dude, to me to this day that interface is still better than Avid's. It just is because <laughs> you could drag and drop, you could do all this you, which you can on Avid. But to me, and again, I I, I I'm. I mean, dude, I'm cutting right now with Kevin. I've cut, I've cut in every one of my films. I've cut sequences or scenes, or I've done sure. because I, I start, I cut my, I cut this movie, Blood and Guts. I cut it all myself. So, you know, I still understand. I love editing. To me, is like writing, right? It's very, it has that same kind of effect. But you know, you, it, it's never that was so. The ease of use on that was so great, and so, but it was. I don't even know if they're still in business, dude. It's like no, if they're I, still making. I think they are. Like when I, I to one compression rates and 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 it's oh. like. Dude, it was just and all brother. Listen, when you just think this is the way people are going to see the movie, you're not not oh fuck black, make it black and white. I don't care. Who gives a shit? You know. But and and again, dude, the theory being creatively that shit ceases to be shit if it's moving fast enough. They're not going to realize we made it for no money. The the performances are you know a bunch of kids, blah blah blah. So it was you you just had this kind of devil may care attitude about the the editorial thing, and then then they go oh now back to film. Oh my God. So I had to go, everything had to go back to be transferred. And then I had to have an IP. Then I have an, you know, an IN. Then we had the negative cutter. And then we had, oh my, a check. It was like, oh my God. And this is back, dude, photochemically. You had to, this is how you had to color films. You didn't have the Da Vinci. You didn't have like, couldn't go into like, like, what's your luck? What the fuck? You know, it's like, there's too much cyan in this one. There's too much magenta. And, you know, you do, but you did it. You went and screened reels. So it was a totally, foreign, but, but yet I'm, I'm, dude, I'm glad because I got the tail end of that. And it was yeah. great education that I wouldn't have had. Like over the last, you know, with films we were still cutting on a camera. It's like, oh, okay. You know, but that's gone, bro. That's like, no, that's that's. Uh, but I'm glad I experienced it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's, but it, yeah. And the other thing I heard from you is about that. The story about, um, blood guts was that you, you actually used all the, t- the TV station you were working at all their gear and all of their lights and anything well, you, you can grab a help without, without their kind of permission or they were, they, they well, frowned they, upon they, it. <laughs> 
the guy I mentioned earlier, Andy Crittenden, gave me permission. Then he took a job at Fox. Well, I asked for forgiveness and permission now because I'm not going to go back to the GM of the station. And then literally that Saturday as we're shooting, the GM of the station walks into the conference room where we all are, are sequestered shooting this scene and basically said, well, I hope somebody's making money on this. But he never shut me down. Eli Trashinsky, who's a really lovely guy. And years later, dude, years later, I'd done smoking aces and everything. I was at a, this really kind of nice a Mexican restaurant in Sacramento. And uh, my kids were still up there. And I saw him and his family having dinner. And I bought them all dinner. And he had no idea what the hell was going on. And he came over. He was like, and he was so lovely. You know, but I'm like, like, hey, dude, that was a brilliant thing you did for me. And you never, you never like shut it down. You never kind of, you could have, and you didn't. So I was, I was, you know, I was, I was, you know, dancing between raindrops, dude. Um, <laughs> uh, on that particular thing. But yeah, dude, it was all brother M2 machines digitized would tell my then wife on a Friday, I'll see you Monday morning and I would, or Monday night. And I would work through and bring a change of clothes. I slept under the, under the editing console, um, on one inch stacked reels. I, that's how I'd sleep and just cut dude, just, just to get this goddamn thing done. Cause I thought if not now, when, and if not now, never. You know what I mean? It's like it was one of those deals. And so, then you yeah, got, dude, and then very... you so you do this film for eight, seven, eight thousand dollars, right? Then you get into Sundance in the midnight screening, right? Yeah, yeah. So so you yeah, get into yeah. Sundance, and I and I see the trailer, which is so brilliant. That trailer that you sh that you edited for like for Blood Guts is like da, 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 da. how did a sun how did an eight thousand dollar movie get into Sundance and Black, man, right. and you just right. boom 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 and I was like man we did this all is our own marketing dude we did all this great. kind of guerrilla marketing yeah and by the way dude you know like my buddy like Kevin Hale like looked like he's smuggling heroin through the airport and was selling kids to the gypsy I mean it's crazy dude we went way over the top in these little like kind of vignettes but it was like those kind of that vibe was what we needed to have happen and it was because we were just lucky to get anything, dude. It was like, mm -hmm. you know, bro, the idea that it was to play theatrically was nuts, nuts. So that in and of itself was just a gigantic victory for us. And everything else after that was great. And I didn't, I thought the first screening at the library at Sundance was kind of a disaster, it was fine. But I thought the second screening, um, which was in, God, where was that little area where like, it was in the, it was the holiday, it was the holiday village cinema, I think. Mm -hmm. That one was a bunch of snowboarders and they loved the movie. It was a very different crowd. It wasn't the kind of the, it wasn't the, the it wasn't the film crowd. It wasn't the cinese. It was kind of like the guys just coming off the slopes of the snowboard. They loved it. And so, but it was, dude, it was the Sundance experience. It was like, yeah. that was every, at that time, brother. And I don't know if it's the same now because Sundance is a very different place. That was the, that was the goal, man. That was the Sundance Film Festival was, was, that was it. You know, you got there and you were on your way. Um, that, I think that was the first time my mother saw Robert Redford in a restaurant. She's like, oh, I think maybe, you know, you could make something of this, honey. It's like, yeah, mom. I think, you know, we'll see. You know, it's like, that's the... That's the goal, mom. That's the goal. But, I don't want to move furniture the rest of my life. So, yeah. Yeah. And, the funny, and the funny thing is, like, my dad still doesn't know what the hell, the hell I do. Like, I took him on set one day on a, on a spot. Yeah. yeah, they're like, do you make money? You're obviously doing a well enough to, to, yeah. to own a home in Los Angeles. So whatever you're doing, keep and doing you, it. you have a family. You have two girls you're taking care of. And yes, <laughs> right. right, right. You don't but seem they, to be engaging in high-end bank robbery and right so yeah dude whatever you're doing so, so, keep doing it kid. yeah because yeah. that generation like but, that generation like hey, the less i know the better like it's, it's so fu it's so funny because ge that generation is all about like if you don't work in a factory if you don't like bust your ass for nine dude. to five it's not a job oh, dude it's not a job like what are you doing you know like what, no, no, writing i don't understand it writing what? wait what what writing write what yeah. i write i don't get paid to write <laughs> Gorilla's got this great. He, he's got this great. Uh, uh, um, Gorilla's got this great story about his, he and his dad standing on the, like the like the patio of his place in the Palisades, and he just he, his dad's like he's like, you got this from acting. <laughs> he's got this big, got this beautiful kind of sprawling pad in uh, in uh, uh, in uh, uh, Pacific Palisades, and it's like and it's like his dad from acting. You got this? No, no, I've been knocking off Seven Elevens. Yes, from acting, I got this. It's like. But dude, it's a generational thing. Brother. It's a generational it, it, thing. it is. It, it is, and I think the generation coming up behind us, like our our daughters and and and, and that yeah. they, they they are so aware of everything. Like they they know about you know if being on online, and they know about followers, and they know about building content, and they they get they 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 are so much. They're just exposed to stuff that we weren't exposed to. So they are. It's, they are. It's in, they are. It, and I think that's the thing, dude, is to try for me at least to slow that down because I'm so terrified that that overload is very real. You yeah, know, it's very real and it's scary, and it's and it's kind of um, it's 
it's uh, I, I, it's pervasive, and, and I, and I, I can't agree think with of you. Any other- no, I agree with you. I agree with you a hundred percent, and I try to do everything I can. But then they see what I do, and you know, and and, and they're just like it's exciting. Yeah, they're, they're just like they Google. They, they Googled me the other day, and they're like, "Daddy, right. like people know who you are." I'm like, "Look, man, I I am nobody. Right. I, in the grand scheme of the world, I am nobody." <laughs> but but yeah, there's a few people right, who right, right. We, right, all, yeah, 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 I'm not right. you know, like I'm not Obama. Like I can't I can walk right. the street like everybody in the world knows who Dude, think about this, bro. <laughs> think about if you couldn't. That's always because I, I, I've watched oh. that happen. To friends of mine, listen, I watched it happen to Chris Pine. I watched it happen to yeah. Bradley Cooper. I watched it literally happen to them in real time where they couldn't be themselves anymore. And yeah. like they had to deal with with with, uh, you know, with, uh, uh, you know, with. Uh, being constantly bombarded and constantly inundated with um, requests for autographs, requests for pictures. I remember sitting at Dorchester having dinner with Bradley Cooper. And this woman comes up and says, can I get your picture? And she says, oh, honey, I'm just, I'm right in the middle of, he's trying to be cool. I'm right in the middle of a meal. She goes, when are you going to be done? I just kind of post it up there. I'm like, see, I couldn't do, I don't have the time. <laughs> I'll, I'll put the, I'm going to put, I'm going to put this fucking fork in your hand. How about that? And then we'll, and then, and then, you know, it's like, are you out of here? Get the fuck away from the, t- have some respect. You know, I know, I, I know, dude. It's 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 insane. But you're right. You, I've seen someone's, you know, like, come on, man. You know, it's just ridiculous. But, it's 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 insane. Yeah, dude. It's, I don't. I would know what to do. I wouldn't. I, 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 you know, I get recognized once a blue moon. It flips me out, dude. It flips me out. Yeah, you know? it, uh, it yeah. does. Yeah, when I was talking to Albert, Albert, uh, he was, <laughs> he was Albert, uh, Albert Hughes. I was talking to him uh, the other day on our show, and he was telling me he's like, dude, I was at Planet Fitness. And some dude walked up to me. He's like, hey, man, I got a script. Like, he's oh on God, the dude. treadmill. And he's oh like, God. and he's like, uh, well, I'm in the middle of working out. He's like, all right. And he waited. He's like, I'll wait till you're done. And he just stood there next to him. Dude, and I, Albert I was like. I just like, say, man, go through the CAA. I can't, you know, you got to go through the agency. I can't. Because if I read one page and somehow I put. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy it's, walks into a store. I ripped your st- I ripped your script off. It's like yeah, okay, you know, you can't. But that, do that. it's it's no. insane. It's insane. Dude. And it's I get insane. it, brother. I get the hustle, man. I do. I get it. I get it. I get it. But there's but it's a right way to do it. But there's a right yeah. way to do it. Like, look, man. Yeah. I literally got the word hustle on my my shirt and on my hat. Um, my right. whole brand is about hustle. But and I've been I've been yelling and screaming from the top of the mountain. I'm like, look, guys. There's a way to do this. And there's a way to yes. approach people and there's a way to, to do that hustle and respect it as opposed to like calling somebody at their house or dropping off a package at their house yeah. or approach, like, there's ways of doing it. And dude, and, it's creeper. I like, I don't want you coming near Mike. Don't, don't do that. It's yeah. like, I don't, that's not for public consumption anyway. I don't want you to know where the fuck I live. It's like, who, you know, come on, man. You like enough. any more than you would want me to know where you live. It's like, it's creepy, right? It's like, so. And, and I get it, dude. Listen, part of me is always it's always it's always cut with this kind of sympathy of all right, I get it, man. You know, it's like, you know, I, it is it's brutal. It's trying to get stuff. But but the idea that I'm just going to jump right into your screenplay and change your life. And it's like, and I'll say how many scripts you all set first script. Go, write another one. What are you waiting on? Don't 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 sit around, you know, uh, the coffee shop waiting for this one to take flight. Write another one and and work. And you got to work them. You know, you got to multitask these things. You got to absolutely. Of, um, keep them all, you know, keep all of them moving and shaking in a different, inter- you have to, you have, you have to, I still have to, everybody does. And you should, and I like that. I like that experience. You know, I'm used to it. You know what I mean? And it, it's comforting to me. Um, as opposed to just having stuff kind of float in and here you go, here you go, you know?